Paying homage to the mecca of tobacco, Pinar del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR cigar factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut, light, and taste what they love to do. M. Bombay cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. A.J. Fernandez Cigars, makers of the San Latano, one of the most talked about cigars in recent years, is now offering a groundbreaking line extension, the San Latano Bull. The San Latano Bull features an extensively aged and hearty core of Nicaraguan long fillers nestled beneath an attractive Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Housed in a cedar sleeve which depicts the outline of a bull, only solidifies this cigar as a full-flavored cigar. Removing the sleeve reveals a box-pressed cigar with a beautiful, oily, and smooth chocolate brown wrapper. The San Latano Bull burns nice and neat as it issues columns of smoke hitting you with a wall of spice followed by leather and cedar. This densely packed cigar intensifies in deep, rich flavors and becomes a flavor bomb halfway through, only getting better with each passing draw. Strong yet smooth and perfectly balanced A.J. Fernandez, who many have called a tobacco prodigy, has somehow pushed the already spectacular San Latino line of cigars forward with the bull. A.J. Fernandez challenges you to take on the bull, Cigar Snob's number eight cigar of the year for 2014. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week segment. Uh, I want to send a shout out to the folks at Article 15 Clothing. Awesome guys. I don't know if you've ever seen these guys on Facebook. I share some of their videos on Facebook. Their promotional videos are awesome. The reason I mentioned them uh, last week was Veterans Day. Was that last week? Mm -hmm. uh, on Veterans Day, I ordered a t-shirt from them and some beard oil, which is called Pussy Juice. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It, no, it's what? pretty good beard oil, though. But I wanted to support them because there are four veterans that created this t-shirt and merchandising company. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, they do awesome promotional videos. They make really cool t-shirts. And um, one of the guys lost his leg in combat. And they just have a great sense of humor about life and everything. And, you know, mm -hmm. some of the videos, they'll be holding a rifle and they'll snap their fingers and they'll be holding the guy's leg and he'll come hopping along with one leg. They just have a really, <laughs> you know, cool business and a, a really cool marketing strategy. And uh, they seem like really good guys. So I thought on Veterans Day I would support them and, and order a T-shirt. So I wanted to make sure on both shows tonight I, I mentioned them. So cool, cool stuff. Will, any other uh, announcements from our sponsors? Um, as far as um, it's kind of a light week as far as events go, we will be having on the show. We, we have no show next week because of Thanksgiving. Um, but we, Mel Shaw from M Bombay Cigars will be joining us um, the following week, which is um, – and he will – we're going to be smoking a new version of the Casera. Um, I got those Nika. today, by the way. Yep, I just got mine today, too. So um, 
yeah, so we will be smoking Mel cigar on on the show. Um, that's that's like I said, and we we both have really liked the Casera, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we also just a, a note that Rafael Nodal is he's currently at an event tonight at the U.S. Cigar Exchange in Boca Raton, Florida, with the Altadas folks promoting um, his aging room, uh, the Romeo and Julieta aging room. Mm-hmm. So he is, um, as far as he's doing that, and Mr. Phil Zengi and of Debonair Cigars and John michelle Louis of Saga Cigars are making their way through the Atlanta area as we speak. So I know they've been going to a lot of shops. I think oh, right. uh, they're they, departing there tonight. They're departing tonight, yeah. Right. So I think they, yep. It's so they, they, uh, Will, in Stogie Santa, Jeff, uh, the blend number seven, from from uh, Saga Cigars by Jean Michel mm-hmm. Louis, we talked about that on our anniversary show. I've given some of those samples to various people. Really been liking them. It's a really mm-hmm. fantastic blend. It's like a four country blend. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, awesome cigar, and people have really been liking it. So I want to thank our kind of uh, little review team we got going on. People that visit the studio, they're actually uh, right next door watching the show. I've given the the cigars to those guys, and uh, they've been really liking it. So. And we appreciate the folks who are uh, kind of doing that. You know, they've kind of been ambassadors to the show. And it's really worth thanking them for taking the time to give the feedback on that. And I know a lot of them have been going on social media and stuff. So Yeah, they created the Cigar Corner on Facebook, yeah. uh, which I'm a part of. A very active group on Facebook. It's really cool to see everyone posting about cigars and talking about cigars. So Yeah, and there's a lot of activity in that Cigar Corner group. Absolutely. I hope it keeps yeah. up. Yep, exactly. Don't slack off, guys. I'll be very disappointed. Yeah, no, yeah, I'll come <laughs> after you guys. <laughs> cool. Will, what have you been smoking? Um, I'm going to kick it off. And this is a cigar that, that I happen to really like. Um, it's from our sponsor, PDR Cigars. It's the, in fact, what happened is when, when I, I had accidentally sent all of them to you. So when I went up to the studio, I had to get some of them back, right? Because I like this cigar so much. Um, it's the Flor, Flores y Rodriguez 10th anniversary. Uh, Cigar uh, by PDR, which is a cigar. Uh, the Flores Eagle Rodriguez is named for the two folks who founded PDR Cigars, which is Abe Flores and the Rodriguez Brothers. They and this did one this... has the, the white band and the green band on it? Yeah. It's okay. Very, yeah. And when we had Robbie on, that's the one it uh, reminds you of the um, – what I just – I just brain farted. Ramon Alanis band. Yeah. So it's, mm. um. But I'll say this: it is it's a Habano Ecuador wrapper, Dominican Olor binder, and it's got a combination of Piloto Cubano and Nicaraguan Jalapa for the filler in this thing. Um, it it is a very it's gonna have a it has I hate using this word, it has a Cuban esque feel to it, probably more so than oh, anything I've had. I thought you were gonna say uh, unsweetened marshmallow again. No, unsweetened <laughs> marshmallow. <laughs> What? <laughs> unsweet. I got more grief on unsweetened marshmallow. <laughs> you did, dude. You did. So I'm not compared. All I know is compared to. Uh, I'm not dumb and leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way: Who makes up more flavors than that review site? Is, oh my god! There's actually two of them. There's actually two of them. Oh, that do. there's no one worse. Guys, than... know who you are. So. Yeah, we don't have to call you out, you loser. <laughs> oh god so Pencil what did you think shavings. of this pdr cigar will because i smoked this one too i don't remember if i reviewed it on the show I but i've really, definitely smoked it i really like it in the robusto size i think yeah, this is the, yeah i never did the robusto i did the toro uh, again i think this is one it shines in the robusto a lot more mm-hmm. again side matters type of thing i thought it had that cubanesque flavor profile to it and i hate using it it had a, it had an herbal note to it mm. it smoked very different than anything I've had from PDR before. Yeah, it's very, Which, like, almost mild to medium. It's yeah, a very, it's, it's not a strong cigar at all. Yeah, I, if, if I, I had it as a medium, and I'd say that's a low end of medium I yeah, had with it. Yeah, I agree. Um, which, again, it kind of, you know, if you're someone who likes the, the bold Nicaraguan spice cigars, this is probably not a cigar mm-hmm. for you. PDR's got other cigars in the line that will probably suit you with it. Yep. But it's a good cigar, Um, it's and I have it, I mean, it's a nine dollar cigar. I have it as a box worthy. I mean, th- like I said, it meant a lot for me to go up there and grab those cigar, some of those cigars out of the humidor uh, because I really enjoy this one. Yeah, I, I would probably call it a, a box split, in mm-hmm. my opinion. I think it's really good. I think it's one of the. You had the robusto too. I had the robusto. I haven't smoked the toro. I only smoked the robusto, mm-hmm. and I would put that at a at a box split for me, because it, it was a it was a medium body cigar with a lot of flavor. And it, I had the toro as a fiver. Yeah, yeah. 
which we've talked about Stogie Center. Um, size matters, dude. Yeah, size matters. But you know, fiber is a solid. Oh, rate. I'm not knocking in the cigar no, at all. Yeah. That, that's. I think that's a decent. We no. think I, I've been hearing a lot of feedback, and we, Paul and I've tried to talk about it a couple of times that that fiber fiber is not a bad rating. We're telling you to buy multiples, right? Yeah. Uh, speaking of the fiber rating, my um, Nika Rustica will, and this came in the uh, sample pack from Drew Estate, and this is the one with uh, I call it a nipple cap. It's a nipple cap. It's kind of like a short robusto with a nipple yep, cap. Yeah, short robusto. Yep. Yeah. Um, I thought this – Nika Rustica has a really unique flavor profile. Um, it's somewhat earthy, and it's kind of like uh, – it's almost got that like – almost like there's – not fire cure, but it's got that kind of like smoked brisket kind of – not to – now we're going all crazy on flavors now. Stogie saying here, we're going all <laughs> crazy on flavors. It is kind of like a smoked brisket. I don't know. What, what, what flavors do you get from Nika Rustica, Stogie Santa? Not a lot. <laughs> a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. <laughs> a lot of smoke. It's just you know a lot I, of smoke it, from the cigar. Yeah, You're absolutely they, right. They, they it really, pours smoke. It's, absolutely, it's, it's, it's a profile that it doesn't suit me. I mean, I'm not saying that's sometimes it, that's it's, it is what it is. I find it to be very earthy, very I wanna, earthy, definitely. I want to call it smoky too. I mean, that sounds kind of weird to call. I smoke remember what smoky. happened to the workshop when you guys lit them up. Oh, that night. it's like yeah. I think I would have smoke detectors. Um, oh, yeah. In this smaller size, I, I would definitely call it a fiver. Mm-hmm. I like it better than some of the other sizes uh, in this line. Um, but it, it has that smoky, earthy profile, which mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't quite suit my palate. But I, I would keep a fiver around because it's, it is different mm-hmm. uh, and still enjoyable in, in the same token. I, I did enjoy smoking it, but um, I wouldn't reach for these all the time because it, it's just a very unique kind of narrow flavor profile for it. But it, it's a good cigar. Good. Back to you, Will. Um, smoked in um, the uh, Partius 1845 Extra Fuerte in the double Corona size, um, which is a seven. It's a monster size cigar. It's a seven three eighths by fifty four, um, and it features an Ecuadorian Habano Lajero wrapper, a Connecticut Habano binder, and fillers from uh, the Dominican, which are Piloto Cabano. And a mix of Nicaraguan filler. Um, what this is is it's an, the extra forte is an offshoot of the uh, Partagas 1845, which was introduced by uh, General a couple of years ago. Are these the ones it, they sent us, Will, in the box, yes. in the white boxes? Yes. This okay. is the yep, yep, yep. Same one we're kind of been promoing for General right in now. In which size did you smoke? The double Corona, which is a seven and three eighths by fifty four. Okay. So they're using higher primings and they're doing longer aging, but it's it's the same blend as the 1845 with mm-hmm. those caveats. Now, I, I'll i be honest, when I first smoked the Extra Forte, I really didn't care for it as much as the um, original 1845, which I thought was a good cigar. This really surprised me in the big size. Double Corona, in my opinion, is one of the hardest cigars to get good flavor out of. Mm. Um, but I did get some very good flavor out of this. Um, and it wasn't one that undergoes a lot of radical flavor transition, but did deliver some nice uh, flavors. You're definitely the fourth day. You're going to get a little red pepper in that thing. Um, it's a mix of er- – it's an earthy, grassy. There's some great natural tobacco flavors in it. Um, it definitely starts out – it's one of these cigars that starts out in the medium, but as you're smoking it, it gets to full. You, 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 you start to feel the strength of this thing. Um like I said, I was surprised how this smoked in this size, um, and um, you know, it actually kept its flavor. You know, I talked about we were talking on the break. Sometimes how a cigar runs out of gas, particularly one that's over seven inches. This one kind of held on to the end. I gave it a fiver. Um, I thought it was a solid, solid offering um, in this line. It really surprised me. Um, good, good size. Um, nice, good two-hour smoke as well. So nice. Good. Now, Stokie Santa, all the way from throw it off the boat to Oasis, what have you been smoking lately? I'll tell you what, I, I'm really enjoying Casey's uh, Racine. I haven't smoked that yet. I, I have the, is that the, uh, is, it's the, not a Lancero. It's, it's a like Lonsdale. A, a Lonsdale, yeah. yeah. It's just really, it's got that sweetness. Uh, <clears throat> I've heard everything from Grand, Grand Cracker and mm-hmm. different things. It's just a... Uh, cinnamon uh, bun? Oh, uh, uh, cinnamon bun. <laughs> 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 Pencil shavings and everything else, but I, I'll tell you what I, I think Casey is spot on with this one. I always like the Racine mm-hmm. blends. 
Uh, I really did. I, I people, you know, say I like 13s or 14s or whatever. Doesn't matter. I think this is something that was long overdue. And, and in this particular vital, I think it shows. Yeah. Shows off. What's your rating? What's your rating on the latest Lonsdale for? Uh, uh, for him, I'll call that. I'll call that box worthy. Nice. Nice. Box worthy all day long. I I, I really enjoy that smoke. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you know, I think each of those three, I have not smoked the 15 yet, but the, the 13 and 14 smoke very different. Oh, I, I I tell you what, I just love the 14. I really do. The 14 came around. I yeah. I was I was a little unsure it about the It took time. 14. It took some yeah, time. Yeah, it did. You know, with 13, it was right out of the box. You know what yep. I mean? Bang. But, uh, and, and the other one I was just saying off uh, where we were on break was the, um, uh, what was the, um, what was on with the Reserver and Habano? Um, we just mentioned it on break at the wet pack. Oh, God help me. Oh, out. the, uh, the Bel Ancre. Uh, the Bel Ancre. It had over a year age in the, a box of those. I smoked half a box in about three days. Really? I was just oh, looking God. at my box in my human or going, you know, I should revisit this because oh, it's been about a year. With that wet pack, it really, everyone fell in love with the Reserver, and he made that because he didn't have enough tobacco mm-hmm. for the other one. Yeah. And the Reserve is okay, but that Habano, oh, that thing is just special. Special, spe- if you got it, smoke it. I do. I have almost a full box of those. Oh, I'm telling you, you, you bring it out. And what I'm doing now, I sold more of them. Uh, you know, you got the wet pack, and it's got a gold wet pack around it. And I put it right in, right in, in, in uh, uh, the humidor itself, and people walk by, and it catches That's their eye. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's this? And then, you know, then now I got to reorder. But th- th- over a year's age, and it's mm. that's. That's something I've been enjoying. I mean, that's nothing new. It's been out, what, two years, three years? Someone was telling me in the yeah, lounge yeah. when I was there last Friday mm-hmm. to go back and smoke a Noea Reserva. Oh, yeah. It's on oh, my yeah. list for this week. Oh, yeah. And oh. Uh, I did. And boy, was he. Was it Ken? Is yep. it Ken? Yeah. yeah. That's the one I gave him. Yeah. I it, told him to smoke Ken, these. Ken took, Ken's a dude to go back and revisit that. And oh. I'm like, I did. And I was like, holy crap. You know what I got <laughs> left? These and things freaking at the shop. Awesome. The reserve and Noea. Oh my God! Yeah, that's what, that's what no, I spoke. No, no, the reserve, the Noea reserve. That's what we're talking about. Noea oh, reserve is the one that's not the yes. regular, the not the regular one. Noea oh, reserve. Yes. One box. We got one box left, and it will never see the counter. Never, never, oh, never, my never. Oh God! That's I, that's coming home. It's got to be. It's fight Chuck Norris now. After it, it that age. About, oh yeah. Because when is. did those were those re-released in 2013? No. He does a batch a year of those. Uh, no. Well, they're gonna do that now. They're gonna hold back on that a little bit. But that was every three years, I thought. Because they yeah, had the six, were, nine, and twelve. Twelve. It was right. twelve. You're 12, right. It was 12, twelve. Every three years. So I bought two boxes in 2012. Mm-hmm. I bought a, a box of smoke and a box oh. to age, and I'm still smoking through the. The open box that I have, I kind of mm-hmm. got like, I probably only have five or six singles from mm-hmm. that original box. That's how much I like to smoke them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have a sealed box from 2012. And right now, they're smoking amazing. They're uh, smoking I'll tell amazing. You, I, we had a little, uh, it's been, the weather up here in Northeast has been nothing but oh, spectacular. Gorgeous. I had a little fire in the back uh, yard last Saturday. And I, I had the original J21s with the J21 right on the label. Oh, you still have some of those, really? No. You told I me you were have all anymore. out. I was all out. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about something. I mean, the J21s, I mean, it's like anything else. Just like Fred was saying, to go back and try to do different things, sometimes it disservices that cigar. And the J21s. I don't know. I have a newer box of J21s, and as they age, they get better. Yeah, they but not like, to get oh, better. this particular. But the original ones, mm-hmm. I agree, were, yeah. Special. Something spectacular. So that's enough of tap. On to what you, what you smoke lately now, Paul? Uh, I went through a, a ton of Connecticut student. Yep. Um, one of the ones I went through was a Kristoff DR4. Yeah. This, again, kind of has that earthy, almost meaty kind of mm-hmm. feel to it. It's that's a very... A, that's, the one, that's the one PDR is doing, yep. yeah. Yeah, it's a very different feel uh, for a Connecticut. You get a, a little bit of that, like, kind of light creaminess, mm-hmm. but mostly it's kind of a... Deeper, earthier flavor, which I really don't care for in a Connecticut when I smoke them first thing in the morning with coffee. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. I would I would call it like a fiver. Mm. Somewhere between a try one and a fiver, I think. This is in the Robusto size. Mm. It just didn't fit that. If I smoked it later in the day, maybe. But mm. in the morning with coffee, that I, That's find, not I don't a, know. It, maybe later in the day. I, I was thinking of Coupola last week. I was uh, where his, his what to get, you know, his, his wedding, a special. Yeah. So I was pulling out. No, I pulled out in the back the 2013 uh, limited Avo. Yeah, that's a good cigar. I tell you what, that that's flew the, uh, that flew under the radar. Big it really did. Time. What was the 2013? What did he call it? 
Dominant 13. Dominant 13. Okay. okay I'll tell yeah, you yeah. what. Uh, very, I mean, it, this doesn't say, I mean, uh, Davidoff, but it's it's got some grassy flavors, but that's not the only thing behind it. Right. Great smoke. I, I enjoyed it. I had one box oh. left. I got about eight or ten of them left at the store. They're mm -hmm. really oh. good. Oh, if you have any in your in your sam in the sampler, they smoke exactly like. I mean, I think they're the same ones. Yeah, they're yeah. really. No, I, I think I smoked like my a, entire oh, sampler. Yeah, that that is such a good cigar. I think you know. I, I didn't even realize it. You know, it was funny. I just I don't know what was popping in my mind when Coop was mentioning about you know his uh, his cigar for his, his daughter's wedding, and mm. it just happened to pop in my head. I looked up in the back of the humidor. I goes, "Wow, I got one more box of these." Nice. So, interesting. A very good cigar. Yeah, so I'd call the Christoph DR4 Robusto, I'd call it a fiver. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, for me, it didn't, you know, Fred was talking about how you kind of pair wine and food. Yep. And you pair cigar and beverages. Gotta be careful with that. It, it wasn't a coffee morning cigar pairing for me that went splendidly well. There's mm -hmm. definitely other ones that I would, th there's probably, I may do a top five Connecticut cigars to come out this year, Will, because I smoke so many Connecticut's. Um, they're I don't know this one will be on the list. This one I would smoke later in the day. And, again, it's a good cigar. It just doesn't fit that morning uh, uh, profile for me. You know, I thought it was – well, we should talk about that. That's a great idea because I have some interesting thoughts on that. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Will. So on the Davidoff theme, um, I went and smoked the uh, Davidoff Year of the Monkey. I got to try that. I want to hear this. Oh, I haven't smoked this one yet, dude. I didn't so make I it to the Coop, Coop local Davidoff at, shop. Look at, he's getting excited about this. He is. This is excited. Yeah. I can tell. You may, you may be surprised. Um, I love the Zodiac cigars. Okay, I love, I love the sheep. I the love year of the one. snake. You guys oh, love me, and Cooper. I, 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 I don't get it. it. I don't yeah. get it. This one has, you know, I, when I when I found out the blend, they're using the Ecuadorian Rojiza wrapper, which is what they're using on the Winston Churchill. They got a San Andreas Mexican binder. And they got a mix of Dominican and Nicaraguan and Peruvian tobaccos. And they made this a six and a half by 50 Toro with a little pigtail on it. And I don't remember a Davidoff having a pigtail before on it, mm -hmm. which I thought was a very small pigtail. I guess it represented the monkey tail. Um, that being said, I was disappointed with this cigar. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, it's not a bad cigar. It's, Maybe that it's, means I'll like it. it well, uh, here's the thing. I, I think you might still. And, and it's, it's, got a, it's, got, it's got that herbal profile in it, right? But it just, it's a $35 cigar. And it didn't wow me for a $35 cigar. All right? If this was another price point, I may be thinking differently about this cigar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had, a, it, had, it had the herbal notes. It had some... Uh, Earthy notes, some cedar notes in there, but it just, and it's, and it's cliche to say this, it couldn't make up its mind what it wanted to do. That sucks. And, and um, I think um, it, got, it got a little more spicier at the end, but not overwhelming. Great, I mean, it's a, it's a great constructed cigar. It's in the medium range, um, so to speak. Um, here's the thing. I would say it's a cigar I'd still say if you're a Davidoff fan and you like this series, Try one, okay? It's not one I could say right now at $35, go buy five of them. Mm -hmm. So your rating is a try one. It's a try one, but it's based <sighs> on a th – remember, we're, you know, I can't tell someone to go buy – I think you have to try one. I, here's what I would say. Try mm -hmm. one before you go buy more mm -hmm. and see what you think. I, I think it can appeal to some people, this cigar. You know something? Remember, we'll go back to what Fred said earlier in the uh, interview. That you take construction as almost it should be a given. A given. A given. It's a given. Okay. Um, without mentioning any names, we all know who puts out great construction cigars. Yep. I got to say one thing: I've never had in the years of smoking, I had a Davidoff that never smoked good uh, uh, construction-wise. Oh, I have. No. Because well, I have Paul syndrome. You had a Davidoff. I never had. Just this morning, dude. I lit up one of those little. Like Lancero old Davidoff Thousand Series. Yeah. How can you have a construction problem? I must have with bought five or six of them. That was and a great cigar. You sent me one. Yeah. Probably one or two of them out of that six had to construct, and I could I could feel I it. Never. Like like right before the end, like right here on the cigar it was hard, hard as, a, as a rock. Was hard it as humidification a rock. or was it stick? No. no, no, it was hard as a rock. Like yeah, when, it, when a cigar is hard as a rock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I never, never. I mean, 
25 years I mean, I, I years don't of claim to have smoking. the perfectly humidified Almost humidors. Years, but I never, 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 yeah. never, never, never. I mean, it's never. rare. It's rare, but I have, I have had it. it more often go. than not, they smoke fine. But mm-hmm. I have Paul syndrome, so I have. Yeah. There you go. I mean, like I said, for a $35 cigar, it, it's a given, and this does have great construction. Um, you know, I see some sites sometimes score, you know, burn very high in the numeric points. And I say, I don't know how you could score burn at the same level as flavor. Mm-mm. Basically, if that cigar is canoeing, the it should fail right there. And that's, that's, well, yeah. yeah. Burn, yeah. draw, and overall construction are mm-hmm. three different categories for me. Mm-hmm. And for it to achieve a high rating here in the Stoey Geeks, those things are a given, dude. Mm-hmm. It's got to have good burn, draw. Sometimes it can over, sometimes you can work through it. Yep. You can work, but it's hard. Sometimes, it's to too, draw. though, I will smoke one that has a good burn and draw, but has not so good construction. So there's right. a void in it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I got really good flavors until I hit like a void. So there's like a hole in the tobacco. Work through and, it. I, and I don't really hold that yeah. again. So burn and draw are probably more important than sometimes construction because you can work mm-hmm. through a construction issue. But uh, it's sometimes, um, you know, there was some some from Drew Estate that had that issue. But I was like, you know, that was really good. Like the flavors were really awesome on that Kinda cigar. So it shines what you went yeah, through. Yeah, so I'll go to buy another one or try a different size or something to uh, to try it out. Um, last week, uh, Stogie said, and Will, you guys weren't here, but I actually really like the Tabac Especial from yeah. Drew Estate a lot. A lot, and that was that one where that sounds huge. That huge, soft huge. press, that soft press, dude, that they do for Corona cigar, the flavors were awesome. In fact, I've smoked two or three different sizes in Tobacco Special, and I still really like it. But mm. that soft press, even though I had a construction issue with it, still my favorite size. Yeah. Like the flavors on that one were really good. Yeah, really good. I like smoking that cigar in the morning in the broadleaf, the the Negra. Yeah, I've, it's really I, I've, good. I've been going back and forth. Smoking some cigars at the shop that I haven't smoked in a while. Last year's cigar of the year, and and everyone uh, with the Milano and and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And know what I? The Figurado is a great cigar in its own little way. But know what I really, really, really enjoy is the Milano Torpedo Maduro. It is, you know, yeah, yeah, that's what you, you smoked? I smoked. I smoked once, and I was like, wow, that's a really good cigar, and I haven't revisited. You ever smoked yeah. that coupe? I, I was. I was not wowed by it I, when I, it came I out. It. I thought, but I thought right. it was, redo it, redo it. But, but I've been, yeah, I've been wanting to redo. I have some, and I know they have some other sizes of that too, right yeah. now. But I happen, I, I love going back to different cigars that you haven't really, you know, it, 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 it probably speaks to your point, and I'm, I'm not knocking the cigar by any means and imaginations. It's been very, very slow. I said, let me, let me find out why. I'm saying, yeah. wow, maybe they had the initial, um, what Cooper's maybe was bringing up, maybe that was prevalent throughout people were smoking. I smoked one like that, an EPC Cardinal mm-hmm. in the Toro size. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, I found those on closeout because they weren't selling at a particular shop. And mm-hmm. I was like, I really like this blend. That's a Sumatra wrapper. Yeah. It, this box has been sitting in their humidor for probably a year, hasn't sold. I bought a box at a, at a discount because they weren't moving it. And I'm like... The same thing you like yeah. you were saying, right? Like, there's got to be a reason. Yeah. I don't think it, it's not a bad cigar by the stretch of the imagination. I was smoked through a box of the Robustos, if not more. So I bought the Toro. I'm like, this is really good. This mm-hmm. is awesome cigar. Now, there isn't a whole lot of complexity in the Toro size. I think the Robusto size, you get a, 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 a change up or two and kind of like the richness. Mm-hmm. You know, you go through the first third and then it gets a little more richer. The Toro mm-hmm. doesn't make as you know, distinct of a flavor uh, or aroma kind of change when you smoke it. It's just a good, solid cigar that I would smoke in the car. I would smoke in the morning with coffee because it has a little bit of age on it. It's not overly strong. It's a really great blend. I would call it box-worthy. Really, the Rebuso and Toro in that line mm-hmm. for me are box-worthy cigars because it's regular production. They age well. They smoke so well. The construction is always great on them, and they produce awesome flavor. So I would definitely call it box worthy. Uh, I, I, I'm going to start a conversation here and we'll see what we how we weigh in on the talk of uh, probably of 2015, as we all know, is uh, with with uh, Nick coming out with a stick and Steve. Now we've had, uh, uh, don't maybe compare them, dude. I'm not comparing them. No. <laughs> Everyone, I want to compare them. I compared them in my head, but I don't. They're two totally different cigars. I'm not saying comparing them. I'm just want to know which one you like better. Oh, but that's comparing them. No, it's it's a choice. <laughs> oh. 
I can't comment yet. I can't. Well, I haven't smoked, you know why... smoked Steve yet. I haven't smoked Steve yet, but I have them now. I just got them. I smoked We're one gonna... of Steve's, but it was right off the truck, so I don't, I don't want to do that to okay, him because well. he was – Steve was very animate when he sent cigars to retailers and he sent cigars to cigar media folks yeah. like us as samples. He included a piece of paper, and he's – Basically, it was like, well, I read it as like, dude, Paul, like, don't smoke these right away. Like, let them sit for a little three to five okay, days. I'll tell you what we'll we do. Them. How's this? And the next three weeks from now, the three of us will, will, will yeah. see, not rate or compare. That's not what I'm saying. It's just a personal choice. How's that? Yeah, I'm, I see. Uh, it's I, yeah, hard just, because I, I'm, I'm curious. I, 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 feel, I feel like I have a relationship with both Nick and Steve. Matt, we can't got to put that aside. And no. I got to put that aside. No, I'm don't sorry. Worry. I think that'd be an interesting conversation for a later right. time. I'm not going to do it now. I have, I think my, my, my I'm going to, uh, I have, I'm, where I'm leaning towards now is my personal opinion. I won't uh, do that now. We'll redo it three weeks from now. And uh, and again, smoke all different. I'll, I'll tell you, they, they all smoke different. There's no smoke doubt different about sizes. I smoked a lot of so. Let's put Nick's this cigar has been on the market has been readily available for a longer period of time, mm-hmm. and I've smoked more different sizes in in the uh, Way Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I really like the Churchill in Nick's blend. I think that's the mm-hmm. bell of the ball. Um, I really love that cigar. I think he did a fantastic job. Um, Steve's I've only smoked one. Mm-hmm. That was the Toro size. And I enjoyed it, but I, I can't rate it or review it yet because I only smoked one, and it was Pick when it first came out. Pick them out of cellophane, dry box them. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done difference. that with cigar. He, a said, lot of he said that. Put that in lower humidity. Yeah, all, it big. makes all the difference in the world. He put both. them in higher. Yeah, he was very clear on that the instructions mm-hmm. to do that. Oh, and I'm not just bec- you know I do that to almost any cigar anyway. You know, especially when they're new. Because and, and and the whole thing is, it's a great point. I I will compare them. Yeah. To other cigars that have come out this year and say they got my attention oh. more than a lot more other cigars that have come out this year and a lot of other people putting out cigars. Uh, and, and Nick uh, and Steve both put out a cigar that commanded my attention and, and for a lot so, of reasons. Rightfully dude. so. Yeah. You know, and, and they both deserve And, and not just because of their background, but because of what they've done in their respective blends has and been I, awesome. And, and what they both did, I give them so much credit. They could have easily, you know, like the Broadleaf, Broadleaf, everybody was thinking mm-hmm. that was coming out and... How they both presented no, their, they went, their they went scenarios. A different direction from Broadleaf in a different direction from each other as right. well. Yeah. So, all right, three you, weeks you from know, now. That's our, yeah. that's our homework to do. There you go. A little, little comment on what Steve sent, too. Did you see that fact sheet he attached as well? Awesome. I mean, this is this guy's a stogie geek. Oh, yeah. He, he, I the detail if it was a, he put in there, oh, I mean, on this, when, on this uh, uh, the, the, the When he sent in the order, it was I'd never seen anything like it. Yeah, uh, you, the retailers got the same paper the, yeah. the media did yeah. as well. It was yeah. the same because you were reading it in the shop last yeah. Friday when we were smoking I, 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 I it. And then when what. I got mine on Monday or Tuesday this week, it was the same well fact thought sheet. Well, I think I've never seen that. It was I good. I a breakdown. It's, it's I really, thought it was great. I thought it was great. You know, it's just um, something unique, and they both deserve kudos. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I almost think that uh, this is I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to put words in Steve's mouth. I almost think Steve and I don't I haven't smoked this car. I'm gonna rate it totally fair, but I almost think Steve wants to see something come back with the devil's advocate point of view of this cigar. And the reason why I say that is I think he wants to make it. I think he's saying, all right, if I get some, you know, if he's getting something, let's say that's not fanboy, I love it. He's gonna take that and he's gonna take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, think about I, it. I mean, th- this is just a launch on their own. Both of them. I'm sure they're already thinking what they're doing next. You know, yeah. that's, that's what makes Nick and Steve. Right. You know, but Steve may think for that next production run. You know, if there's something that I, I mean, I just hope that people. You know, I've seen some very high ratings for this cigar. Okay, Steve's cigar. I really hope that that's. You know, you owe it to give him an honest review. Is what I'm saying. Uh, you know, and I'm sure the cigar's a very good cigar from what I've heard. But I think you owe it to give that cigar an honest review. Oh, yeah. Not because it's Steve Saka's cigar and he sent them in the mail. That's not the reason why. Right. Will, what else you been smoking? Um, oh, so back to Drew Estate, I went and smoked the uh, Undercrown Shade Grand Toro. And this was after I, I kind of went back and heard your show. Yep. That you were talking about this. I wanted to kind of compare and contrast the Grand Toro to what you smoked. I had smoked the Undercrown Shades earlier in the summer, and I thought they needed some time. Mm-hmm. That was my assessment. I think um, 
Time's been very kind to this cigar, and I think Time's going to even be kinder to this cigar. I found, Paul, you know, we talked about the, the types of Connecticut shades. There's the traditional milder, creamier ones, and then there's the ones that try to push the boundaries. I think this is one that's trying to push more of the boundaries that they're doing. You see, I, I somewhat disagree, Will. I found this to be somewhere in between. I found it to have, I think, some of those tobaccos in the fillers that want to push the boundaries, but I found that the wrapper still gives you some of that creaminess experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. find do it to be it? like on one extreme of the spectrum or another. It's kind of like in the middle. I, I find it. I find it. It's like it fights each other. I, I really do. It, just, it, it, it doesn't I do, compliment. But as time goes on, even I've smoked a couple yeah. of them uh, that they sent us. They sent me four of them. And mm. I've, I've let them rest and smoked one and let them rest even longer and smoke one. Even in that short couple of week mm. time frame, I found that it got better. So I think that tobacco is like Will's going to say, the, Will was saying the, uh, um, the way that it's going to age is going to be very kind. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. I think these tobaccos are really going to meld together. And I thought it was good. I thought it was I really thought, good. I thought it was. I thought it, I. I had it as box split, which is what you had it as. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing that I noticed about this cigar, when you put that cigar in your hand, it's got some weight on it. Yeah, it does. It's not a light Connecticut cigar. It's it's very sturdy. It's got a pa nice pack, but it doesn't draw tight. Out, out of if you could say if you had a favorite Vitola of all the Jewish states, not including the, the assets and and things like this, or special releases, or just general releases to the public. Do you have a favorite one? It's the Toro sizes I tend to gravitate uh, to. I, I'll tell you that Corona Viva on the on the Corona. The Corona oh, okay. Viva. I considered that a special size. Uh, well, not special. What, what I'm saying, well, it's not really a one-off, but I just think that that that's one of my favorite Coronas I've ever smoked. I think it, they, what they what they did with that was was just remarkable, and the price point on that cigar. You know, and I'm not. I think the, the league is the league, and T52 is T52. We know what that's all about. Let's not waste any time with that. But that Corona Viva, I've I've never been. I, if I haven't smoked three, or four boxes of those, I and it's the one of the. Most the that's the Underground. Yeah, the Corona underground. Corona Viva. I just really, really, really enjoy that cigar. I think they did a great job with that. I I I I, I love it. I really yeah, do. Yeah, they they tweaked the blend with that, and I think whatever they tweaked. I thought Underground was a decent cigar, the original Underground, but I think that Corona Viva special. Yeah, it it, it makes that a great cigar. Yes, doesn't it? that's a box worthy all day long. It will easily. I, 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 yeah, I can't see Fight Check Norris or an Oasis, but a box worthy, that's a hell of a rating in my book. Yeah, yeah it, I, I would Corona Viva is definitely up there. Oh, for me, I never disappointed. Never, 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 never once been disappointed in that cigar, at all. No, it's a really, it's a consistent cigar, um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I agree. It, it, I think it really, in my opinion, it made me pay a little more attention to the Underground right. lineup. Right, I, I, but you know, and again, everyone has their opinion, and I'm not trying to say that Underground's not a good uh, no, line. No, we get, we're going to get you the Underground and the box press yeah. that they made for, Cor Still, I mean, that's a special one that falls outside of your definition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I reviewed it on the last show. Dude, the middle third of that cigar is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, the uh, you no, know, that's a that's a I think that'd be a great segment to get into and another time. What's the most important part of the cigar that you enjoy? The first, second, or last third of a cigar? It's interesting. I bought some from your shop, then we we'll talk about the where the last third mm -hmm. was like the best part of the cigar, hands mm -hmm. down. I mean it made a transition and it was like awesome. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, a lot of people, I think, what they have a tendency to do, uh, I'm not saying everybody, but a large majority in our shop always remember the, 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 it's like mm -hmm. a, a fight. The beginning of the fight, you, you, you'll look, and I, when I say it, like a boxing match, they spar and they don't remember. Then at the end of the fight, that's all they remember. So yeah. breaking it down, not, I think it would be an interesting segment to talk about. But anyway, what's your next one, Paul? So uh, speaking of that, I, I smoked a Julius Caesar Robusto oh. that I actually found on discount. Mm -hmm. it, it was kind of a... Didn't move a lot in this particular store. They had a couple of boxes, and they put it on a closeout. So I bought a box because I love that cigar. The first two thirds have that herbal note, mm -hmm. very almost like cream. No, I don't want to say creamy, but I want to say the way that it coats your palate is, um, it's very like like soothing, like it coats your entire palate. Like it's kind of got a thickness to it uh, in that smoke. But when it reaches that final third, Stogie Santa, it's 
I, I, it's not as enjoyable as the first two thirds, but it's very different. Like it's it's rich. It, it makes this really sharp change once you get into that final third. It's not bad. Some Davidoff in uh, in other brands get really bad in that final third. I don't want to say this is bad, but it makes a very sharp change, and it, it's almost like a different cigar in that final third. Now, it's so odd that you said this because when it first came out. I went from a try one to a fiver, mm. right? And it sat there for the longest time. You talk about age doing something spectacular. Dude, in this box, it's a is box it, worthy. It's this, a box worthy cigar. Dude, you back it's, me it's, up. It's, it's uh, you, uh, you're right on the money yeah. with that, Mark. Oh, oh. my God. God, Dude, it's just, it is a awesome. year in the humidor. In this oh. bo- I bought the whole box. I'm like, I was oh, in the whole box. I'm telling you. I mean, you it's, now it's interesting what you said about taking the cellophane off. This was the same thing too. I bought a box. The box was um, wrapped in cellophane, and then when you take the cellophane off, there was another like almost shoe box that it was in. Right, right. And then case you know how they're yeah. packaged, yeah. right? And then the other box is like a leather kind right. of bound box mm. uh, that opens up, and then right. all the cigars are in cellophane. And when I first took them, there was actually some beetles in a couple of the cigars. Oh, and boy. I think because they were so, like, packed mm-hmm. in this thing, no I swapped way. them out. I inspected all of them. I took mm. every single one of them out of the cellophane, and I put them in my humidor. And I inspected every single one. I tapped every single one to make sure there was no, no beetles. Dust, and right. I actually found another one that didn't have any visible signs. But when I tapped it out, the dust yeah. came yeah. out. And I'm like, I want a new one of these. And so I took them all out. It, even since they've been sitting in my humidor like that, they, they've been getting better yeah. over the oh. past two weeks. They've been getting better. Just being able to breathe mm-hmm. and be in their own element. Oh, these cigars. Are, you smoked one earlier. We smoked yeah, one we earlier. Had one of those yeah. earlier. Yeah, it yeah. was really good. Right? Because really just good. to back up our point. Yeah. Now, this, no, this is not, I didn't say a word to anyone. Mm-hmm. They asked me, uh, and again, they not only in the back humidor, in, in our cases in the front, and I, I would have to say probably three to four boxes sitting that with uh, over a year old yeah and this what i said tell you what try this we sold i sold 10 boxes <laughs> in about <laughs> okay i'll exaggerate say three weeks yeah now wow. the new ones come back in yep people are trying that they, they don't it's it just leave them alone it's yeah. just yeah it yeah. is one of the most and they're expensive they're like oh, 10 12 oh, uh, the repustos are about Twelve bucks. Twelve bucks yeah. a stick. Yeah. And it's yeah. about fourteen, fifteen for the uh, Churchill. Churchill, you talk about if I talk, I, even with age. The, I like the Churchill. I like that one. Yeah, I, it was See, good, I like the but the that Robusto, the just, yeah. it, it, it is. The Toro's okay, but I couldn't. Believe, people were smoking those up. I, all I did is said, you know, you want to try something different. You haven't tried it in a while. Yeah, these got age, and people were eating oh. them up. Oh, uh, Derek, you know, the, the yeah. uh, lawyer yeah. friend there, he must have smoked a half a box or a box himself. <laughs> Really, I did. Really? A bo- I got the box at thirty five percent off. Oh my god! <laughs> right, that's unheard of for that no, stick. No, you never do that. I've yeah. never seen that. Like I've that. never seen that stick at thirty five percent off. And Jeff and I smoked it on the earlier show, and it was. We had actually lit up uh, a different cigar. I was wondering which, if we were going to talk about that. Yeah, one we that did. We lit up in Stokey City. This is one I got from you. I don't necessarily know. Um, this comes from a different menu. This is how yellow the cellophane was on the cigar. Was that the triple E? Nope. No. It was one of hold on. It's up I, there. I got, yeah, hold on. I got one with the band on it. It was one of those. I don't know if I want to call it out. San Cristobal. Oh yeah, it's the San classical. Chris, San Cristobal. The classical. No, that classical. It was, was like a small. Corona Gorda. Corona. Corona. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. a Corona Gorda. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And that, with this much I age on it, I, Jeff and I weren't fans, dude. No. Nope. At all. The triple and I don't know if it was the size, and, but we looked at the cellophane. And we were both like, "Holy crap, dude!" Like, mm-hmm. you expect more, this is some you? age, yeah. right? Like, uh, our expectations were high. Mm-hmm. I think that played into it. And, and I've smoked other ones that were this old that were like fight Chuck Norris Oasis level, mm-hmm. and this one just wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't understand it. And that's when we lit up the, the Julius Caesar Robustos, and we were much. It's so more, funny you said that. I couldn't mm-hmm. believe you that's said funny. that. That's funny, isn't it? Talk. <laughs> it's and, really funny, and it's just not me and you. This this is probably uh, yeah, all 30, 30, 35 people. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they just and they didn't even, they didn't even flinch at the price. Yeah, didn't even they you know it went from oh my god I'm not going to give you that kind of money to where boom 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 all all it, the age yeah. are now going. Wow, how's that? If I can get another box at 35 percent off, I'm buying. Oh it. yeah, just <laughs> it's worth it. Just put it away. Yeah. Will back to you. Before I get to this cigar, I just want to kind of get your opinions on because I've smoked the cigar you guys have smoked tonight, uh, the Debonair 33rd. 
Oh, I um, want to get your opinions on that. This this, this thing is uh, awesome. Uh, um, Jeff needs another cigar. Yeah, I, 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 it comes to me as as you know, I have a relationship with Phil. I, I love him like a brother, and, and you can call me a shield. You want on. This is the best thing he's ever produced. That's what I said. Uh, I, I, and uh, Coop, uh, we said this off the air, on the air, makes no difference. Um, I think what he did by making this in the Mondoro, he he did he. It's unbelievable. It's totally different. It's it, like you're saying. I'm not trying to um, go back to what you're saying before. It, he dialed it back. It doesn't have that ojour taste as much, but. But the maltiness on this cigar and the sweetness on this cigar oh, is spectacular. It is. It's that malty. It's, that, never, it's like a thick and creamy. Oh, and I don't want to say creamy as a no. flavor. I want to say creamy as a component mm -hmm. and characteristics yeah. Yeah. Oh, of the absolutely. smoke. Absolutely. It just covers oh. your palate. The finish on it. and, it, and the But whole the Robusto you smoked has the same component, I found. Mm -hmm. really? It has that thick kind of it's, um, coating. Again, to it's, it. for me, it's going to be in the uh, uh, what I'll call, top five cigars of the year. I'll even go further. It's in the running, maybe for top, top three. Me, me, yeah, top three, uh, whatever. It, 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 I, I already got my. It rating. was. A, I put the. It was the first. And look, we talked about. I had not put an Oasis level cigar on. This Phil. is. This was Oasis yep. in my book. No, oh. I, I gotta agree with you because every puff I take of this cigar, mm -hmm. there is not. Gas. There's not <laughs> one hint of disappointment. And, and you said, it, well, it doesn't lose gas. Like, no. Nope. From the time you light it up to the time, I mean, I'm. I'm down this far in the cigar, and the, the, it's just not losing steam. No, at it, all. it's it's a it's a journey. It's it's a special special cigar. It's not a cheap cigar, but uh, I'll tell you what. And this is one of the things that I think Phil and, and like you said, we love Phil. He's a personal friend of ours. He's a sponsor of the show. But it's one of the things that Phil does well that is tough. You don't find it like in every cigar that you smoke, but <laughs> Phil can make a really large cigar. That holds your attention and smokes great all the way through. Mm -hmm. He can make a small cigar that smokes and has the characteristics of like smoking a big cigar. Like you don't feel mm -hmm. like there's something missing when you smoke all the different sizes. And that's one of the, the, the talents that he has in blending and, and choosing the sizes and not, for the blend. Way he, like that first degree <laughs> smokes like it's a big cigar. And his Salomones and his a size cigars, large cigars, smoke. You don't lose attention. It's it's every puff is there's no disappointment, and nope. and that's that's skill right there. Skill, and it's just awesome. That's his passion. It's it's just that if you go out there and do it, it's 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 like an eighteen dollar cigar. It's 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 worth gonna, every pe eighteen dollars for that much smoking enjoyment, dude. And I, you know, I, so I you know, what Jorge was away. telling me from mm -hmm. Tobacco's University, and the reason I have my pipe out here, he said, "You ever get down to the end of a cigar and you really want to smoke the rest of it right down mm -hmm. to the nub." And he said, take the end of it and put it in a pipe. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that before? No. no I'd never heard no, of that before. No. I did it early with that Ju Julius Caesar yeah. Robusto. See, but I what, smoked it right but down see, in something the pipe. Like that, it just changes the cigar a little bit, the way you, you, you're reducing the, the, the combustion it on was the two. It was different. And it will get it hot. It, it will burn hotter. I wanted hotter. to try it. It did burn a little hotter. Mm -hmm. um, but it did allow me to smoke the whole rest of the cigar. Um, I think there's some tricks to it. I got to practice a little yeah, more about sure. how you light it, how how often you puff on it, you know that kind of thing. But uh, I think it's a val basically my take on that. Will and Jeff and Stogie Santa is it's a valid strategy. If you have a pipe, yeah, you get sure. down to the end of the cigar. I'm saying try it. Definitely try this mm -hmm. strategy. It's definitely worth it. Um, I, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was it was something cool to try. So, mm -hmm. oh, the the sweetness is just perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And you talk about, you know, you hear me, we, we kid around about our drinking on different things. Black cup of coffee with this thing is where oh. you want to be. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. So how do you feel about Coop? Um, it was, like I said, it, it's in the running of one of my top cigars of the year. It's, mm -hmm. it's the best cigar Phil's done to date. It's Oasis level. I kind of agree with everything you guys have said. You confirmed it. You know, when I put that review out there, I didn't know what the reaction was going to be from a lot of Devon Air folks. The debonair, there are a lot of folks who love debonair, and they're kind of concurring with this right now mm. for the most part. I don't want to speak for everybody, but this is a cigar I said, I really encourage you, if you've liked debonair, to try this cigar um, because it's something special. And, and, I've, it, and I've been smoking this cigar since its infancy, and it's just, it's like uh, the best way I can, I can put it, think of a, uh, you look at a, 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 a meter, 
and it just goes up. It goes, keeps going up higher and higher and higher. It's just amazing. It really is. So, yeah, and, and it's the and I'll say, I said this is it's the best day I've smoked a day in an A size. Yep. Yeah. Uh you guys were talking about Fuente or Ernesto Perez Carrillo. What that? do you think? Fuente or Ernesto Perez Carrillo? Uh the Godfathers. You know what I mean? They're, 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 they're awesome. Are. I mean, and I smoked two cigars from each one. Mm -hmm. So uh we'll go alphabetical order. So okay. we're not showing preference. We'll talk yeah. about Arturo Fuente first. Um, I smoked the what was the box press torpedo in the Don Carlos blend that came out? Uh, I mean, his personal blend? Uh, no, no, that wasn't his personal blend. No, the Desti the, uh, the Destino. The no, this Destino. is the Fuente Don Carlos blend in that shark size. The eye of the shark. Eye, eye of the shark. Of the shark. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, the eye of the shark. I, I wasn't impressed by the eye wow, of the shark. Wow, you're dude. the only one that has agreed with me with I, that. I'm yeah, agreeing with I, you on that too. I'm I, agreeing. I wasn't I, impressed. I oh my God. So we got three. I, I'm. I, this is going to be a great... Oh, Good, good, I go. Thought the other, so I thought the other one was better than you Much better. The, uh, yeah. the personal I, I haven't smoked the Robusto yeah. one yet uh, that just came out. I got, I didn't I I give you a five pack? You gave me a five pack of yeah. the Robusto one. I haven't smoked that one yet. Yeah. Oh, wait. I smoked the shark size. It, I mean, it wasn't bad. I mean, it's, it's not a bad cigar. No, 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 right? no, 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 no. But it's not. When you smoke a special size from Fuente in the classic Don Carlos blend, which is, I mean, this blend has been around for a long time. Cameroon wrap. This cam has the camera. Mm -hmm. Same Cameroon wrapper. Iconic blend in the industry. I, it just it didn't wow me, dude. I mean, this was like maybe wow. a fiver for three me. Three out of three. I, I'm I, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna. Go. I I think it's a try one. Yeah. I know it's a try one. I, I I wouldn't disagree with you guys. No. And, and I mean, I think it's gonna get wow. a little better with age, which is I think why go, maybe go, it, go on uh, other sites and. Let's put it this way. I get... Are other sites rating this like super high? Super high. I no way. I'm getting no calls. Way. I'm, I'm getting calls <coughs> from, excuse me, from different... All over, the, all over the United States. You still have them, still have them. I sold out in two hours. Wow. And what's going to happen with this, too, you're going to see a, uh, a little bit limited... Re, uh, our rep from uh, Fuente was telling me he has 20 boxes of the Shocks and Yales for mm -hmm. New England. That's it. That's it. Wow. I'm glad I stocked up with them more readily available. That's, that's a great not even smoke. my favorite Wait, sock. Wait, that regular Yale Shark you're talking about? Yep. Yeah. That is because my favorite Because of what size. they did with the Eye of the Shock. Interesting. So, so the amount that's going to be around is not going to be as roll, It's the rollers probably that they have. Now, yeah. speaking of Sharks, um, it's interesting. I've got a couple of uh, Opus X Sharks, mm -hmm. um, two different styles of it one came in the uh charity box mm -hmm. the uh cigar family charitable foundation cfcf yeah. box from 2009 it's a shark in the cfcf boxes from 09 and 10 not a big fan i smoked an 09 the other night the first third is absolutely amazing then it has this like kind of like herbally almost sour note to it that just persists throughout and I, I didn't even finish it dude and this wow. is a 2009 wow. opus x in the shark size first third amazing i mean sweetness with that little bit of touch of leather i mean it's awesome and then it, like it goes like sour notes that come wow, through I wonder what that's in from. your pet. I don't know what, and that is consistent. Mark Jr. and I smoked a ton of these, and we were consistently like, this is not the best size from these boxes, and I don't know why. Now, I have two of Opus X Sharks from regular production, which I don't, they may be made probably 100 boxes at some year in 2012 or something. I've got a couple of those. And every time I go to smoke them, I sniff the foot, and it smells like a gym locker. And I'm like, it's not ready to smoke yet. <laughs> and it, it's been doing that since like 2012, 2013. Uh, hmm. So I don't know what's up with the shark size in the, in the Opus X. But um, the shark size in the Anejo is definitely my – it's a box press torpedo mm -hmm. essentially. So uh, it's an interesting size. Uh, but that's kind of my take on it. I, these 09s, I don't know. You can't really buy them. So the rating is kind of interesting. Um, for the first third, I would call it a fiver. Like, I'm glad I have a couple around because I really enjoy the first third. Mm. But it just gets this sour. It's it's not horrible, but there's 
you know, when you eat a sour kind of candy, mm. like it's good to eat a couple of them, but if you got to <laughs> no. smoke the rest of the two thirds for another hour, like it, it gets old after yeah. a while having that sour note. So um, that's my take on Fuente mm-hmm. recently. Um, Will, do you have more smokes? I have two more. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I smoked the Indian motorcycle Maduro this week in the Toro size. Nice. Um, this cigar, right? When you look at this cigar, it is a rugged looking Connecticut broadleaf. I mean, it's, it's got a too deep, but it's got a lot of charm to it. And, and when you look at that band on there, that retro style band, um, this is a very different cigar than Debonair Maduro. It, it's a little more, it's, it's more dialed back also than the Indian motorcycle Habano. The one thing I was, and I was talking to Stogie Santa about this off the air, and, and I think it's a great cigar. It's, I liked it in the Toro actually better than the Robusto. And I have this as a box worthy cigar. It, and you can look at this a couple of different ways. It brings some of those rugged Connecticut broadleaf qualities on one hand. And on the other hand, it brings a, a smoothness and sweetness to it. And it kind of brings those two worlds together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think it's an interesting cigar. Mm-hmm. I still would I still have a slight preference for the Habano. Mm-hmm. I think the Habano is really, but this is a great. I mean, for the price point on this cigar too, mm-hmm. you're looking at a cigar. It's eight bucks, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and it um, you know, I was I was pretty imp- I was pretty impressed with this cigar overall. Um, it, you know, I think like I said, I think Phil has found he's got two broad leaves in his portfolio, but they're two very different ones. Mm-hmm. It, it's yeah, the best I ones. mean the the price point on the Indian motorcycle with that Maduro wrapper being a medium bodied cigar, I think he's found like a niche, right? Like if you yeah. like Maduro, mm-hmm. but you don't want something that's like overpowering, and you want something at a decent price point, the, the Indian motorcycle Maduro is the way to go. But it's gonna have some of that a little more of the gritty. The gritty Connecticut broadleaf mm-hmm. quality to it, mm-hmm. but not meat. It's not gonna have that all you. No, it's, you know. it's not as refined. It's not as refined, but it's an interesting smoke. I, and I think this is another cigar is really gonna be kind to with age too. Oh no I think doubt. As yeah, it no dries doubt. out. Yeah, yeah, as it dries out. So I, like I said, I like, like I said, I happen to like the Robusto better than the Habano. Yeah, and isn't it have, wild? Yeah, and I like the Toro better in this. Try one. the try the Maduro and the Gordo. You'll be surprised. Yeah, I have the church. That was pretty like, good. I think I smoked one of those. Yeah. Those were good. Those yeah. were good. Yeah. I could see that. I was. I could see that. I wasn't. That I, I. You talk about size. I was not impressed with the. Uh, I, I'm not. The Churchill was okay for me. I'm curious to see what he could do with the Churchills on those. Uh, you, big major difference between the Habano and Maduro and the Churchill. Oh, it's, really? You see a bigger difference in in the in, blend. In the blend. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, it doesn't translate as well for me anyway in, in, in the Churchill. So, see, I do say some bad things about Phil. Once ah, in a while. That wasn't bad. Yeah, I know. Was just caring. <laughs> I'll yeah. stick with Fuente. I smoked an Arturo Fuente Especials. Got these on closeout <laughs> from Mr. J's Havana yeah. Smoke Shop. Dude, these were good. Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, the first two-thirds, while it was an enjoyable smoke, had like a bitter component to it. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of bitterness I got in the first two-thirds. However, when I got to the final third, that bitterness went completely away, and I was like, holy crap. I'm like, this is a really good smoke in the final third. Mm-hmm. What were those sizes? Are those like a Toro? That looks yeah. like a Toro. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, for if you find them on sale, you know, what were they on closeout? Four, Four bucks. bucks. Yeah. Great outdoor yeah. yard. I'm doing yeah. something else yeah. kind of Walking smoke. Walking a dog or something, yeah. you know. And, again, good flavors. Um, a little bitter in the first two-thirds, but that final third, like the – the bitterness turned to sweetness. It was amazing to see mm-hmm. the transition in the final third. So I like the smoke. I would call it a fiver. I think it's a good fiver cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, on closeout, I might at buy that, a little yeah, more. Right. At that, at that price, price yeah. I would buy more. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a good cigar to give to people uh, that are visiting or you know want to have a casual cigar <laughs> on the deck in the summer kind of thing. Or at a wedding. Or at a wedding. Mm-hmm. Could be a good wedding cigar. There we go, yeah. Yeah, they're not overpowering. Um I don't remember what the blend was. Do you remember what the blend was no, on these? No, I did not. These came out a few years ago, too. There wasn't really a big hit for Fuente, either. No. They kind of flew under the radar. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about at least one EPC cigar. I want to talk about his Sumatra from Ernesto's Humidor. This is what he calls the Edition Colorado. Mm-hmm. So Ernesto created uh, Ernesto's Humidor. 
And basically, he had this big walk-in humidor at the factory where he was, like, experimenting with different blends. And he was able to pick three of them and create um, a few hundred boxes of three different cigars. And you get ten each of the cigars. Right. This one is a Sumatra wrapper. It's definitely got that Sumatra spice. Like, it needs some time to settle down. When you smoke it, it wakes up your senses, especially on the retrohale. It's got that spice, but it's got a little bit of sweetness. And I think that the over time, the spice will calm down, and uh, it's going to be a very, very smooth, sweet smoke. But it's going to need a couple of years of age in your humidor, or six months, a year. You know, go back and smoke it in those different times. But it definitely had that spicy component from the Sumatra wrapper, which tends to calm down over time. Um, but I thought this blend was good. Um, I would call it um, a box split, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Have you smoked this one, Stokey Sand? Have you smoked? I the did ones? the Maduro. Okay, I haven't smoked the Maduro yet. Yeah, it was. It was a good. It, it was, was good. Yeah, I would give that a fiver. Okay. I haven't done the the Sumatra at all yet. Not Next yet. week, we'll hopefully I'll smoke the Maduro. Did you, and I you, speaking of Sumatra, did you remember the fifth anniversary that he yeah, put out last year? Yeah, the first runs were unbelievable when they first came out. When I reordered, total different cigar. Really? Oh, I wonder if they went back and just did another product. You know, probably they didn't have extra. They probably went and redid it. Really? So it wasn't as good? No. I, I thought the fifth anniversary, when it first came out, flew under the ra- radar. I thought it was one of his I did, too. I thought it was kind of getting him out of He was in a little bit, I don't want to say, a little bit of a slump. Yeah, I just, I, I, well, I, he's in a slump. And... um with that cigar, I found really amazing. And then uh, the second and then third batch, and they, needless to say, they're sitting at the stores. This I didn't realize you can still order those. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. I thought it was a one-time run. At well, uh, what happens, it's not that they're remaking them. They have, they still have them. Interesting. You know? Yep. Uh, Maybe it's not aging well. No, nah, uh, something. Yeah, well, I, I noticed a difference when it first came out. That was last year. Really? So, yeah. Was, on on the closing though, what what do you guys think about Willie Herrera's Lancero? I just made me think of that. The Herrera Esteli Lancero. Yeah. Uh huh. Liked it. I'd still go for his Lonsdale. All day long. I'll tell you what. You got yeah. one that's or the Corona or the Corona. The Corona yeah. yeah. Yep. I have a box of the Coronas. Oh, and that that's the older box. Yeah. That's the one from Nicaragua. It doesn't say. It, 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 trust me. You got the old box. That's the best one. I, I, I was. Li- well, you know what it was? The seasons changed, right? So we mm-hmm. obviously moved from fall into, you know, winter time. And so my humidors were calling out to me, you need to fill me up with water. You know, mm-hmm. they were like, you know, all mm-hmm. over the place. With, they were getting dry. Um, so I had to pull a bunch of stuff out to refill all my mm-hmm. humidification in my humidors. Uh, and I came across a signed box of the Willy Herrera uh, Coronas. And, oh, smoke uh, them. They're good. Yeah, they're, they're I was really, really digging really to that good. box. Yeah, because uh, people are raving about the Toros. I thought they were okay. I don't no, think... I I thought they were okay. I I think the Corona and the Lonsdale. Lonsdale. Me too. Good. Me too. Yeah, but you know, with his Norteño, I really like the Churchill that came out this year. Yeah, the Limitada box That's press. Right. Yeah, that, a lot of people have been saying the same thing. I smoke that this year. That. That's box worthy. I reviewed it this week. Um, I thought the the flavors were awesome. It kind of had that nice balance of a little bit of spice, some sweetness, a little bit of earth. Very well balanced. I thought yes. the box press size in that blend, in the Churchill size in that Limitada, worked very well. And I would definitely call that a box split. I thought that was That's one what of, I had in the it. Norteño that was the best one I've smoked. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought most of the Norteños were fibers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, not a bad rate, but I thought in that Churchill, a little pricier. It's fourteen dollars cigar. But I think it was. I think whatever tweaks they did on the blend there worked well. Will, do you have one more cigar to review? Yeah. Oh, Go for uh, it. Okay. Quickly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if I should hold it for next week. All right, hold it for a, next week. Let's hope it because I want to give this one justice. Um, so okay. I'll talk about it next week. Yeah. Do we have a we have a prize pack? I thought we gave this one away already. We have an intemperance. This is labeled 162. Did we not have a winner for 162? Maybe not. Oh, 162, what, what it was, that was the anniversary show. Okay. We get, yeah. So we have a five-pack in temperance to give away to a lucky listener who can answer the question that Will's going to come up with. <laughs> Roma Craft in temperance. This is a store exclusive to Mr. J's on yep. the Smoke Shop. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it's, uh, yes, and that uh, is the, uh, the BA blend, correct? Yes. Correct. BA Revenge. 
Yes, I like I like What that. did Fred look like when he dressed as Hugh Hefner for Halloween? Thank you, Nick. That was a good Thank one. Thank you, Nick. Yes. Uh, That's Nick good. to the rescue. I, I Nick know to the, the rescue. rescue. <laughs> Email the show at SoGeeks.com. You get a five-pack of the Intemperance BA Revenge store exclusive to Mr. J's on a smoke shop mm -hmm. from Aroma Craft Tobacco. Awesome yep. cigar. Yep. Sweet. Thanks, everyone, right. for uh, helping us out tonight. No, Jeff, no show next Santa. week, guys. No, no, no show, show next, next week. week. It's Thanksgiving. We're, we decided we're going to take the week off. Yep. We had uh, anniversary shows both on Security Weekly and Sui Geeks. So, yep. yeah, we were uh, working, the, yeah. working the production crew quite hard. Yeah, so we're going to take the week off, give everyone a break next week. Enjoy Thanksgiving. Eat lots of food. Smoke a nice Thanksgiving cigar after a big meal. It's a great time go. to have a cigar and tell us about it the week after. So thanks, mm -hmm. everyone, for watching. We'll see you uh, not next week, but the week after oh, on God. the Stogie Geek Show. Oh. Oh, I am fucking dying.